So excellent. Um, you are welcome to turn your cameras on if you want. Um, we do say please stay muted um, unless you are speaking. Um, but y'all know Zoom etiquette by now anyways. Um, so we're all set uh, in the uh, chat. Um, that's where Andrew has posted the demo staff site and the demo OPAC. So you can get in there, look at that 2105 and play a little bit more with it. So let's get started. Who has our first question? I've got a question, Daniel from Pueblo. I was just wondering, uh, has anybody noticed any of the early adopters noticed any reports that have broken after the upgrade? Um, my favorite ones are usually the finance reports. They always seem to have problems or, or payment reports. I have not gotten any report, any reports of broken reports. Um, I've also not seen any bugs that made big changes to how accounting things are, are stored this go around. The last couple of releases have been big moving pieces in account lines, and we just didn't do that this time. It was a little, little more calm. So I'm not promising that no reports will cease working, but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that it will be minimal to none. Yeah, there's always one, one or two little snowflake that always kind of breaks, but I was just wondering if anybody had seen anything or noticed any of those so far. Not yet. Thanks. Sure. Yeah, I don't think we've had any comments about broken reports this time. That's kind of unusual because you're right, Daniel, something usually does break a report somewhere. That is great to hear. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Hey, um, who else? What else do we have? What other questions or thoughts or? Morning. No, because if y'all don't ask questions, we're just going to have to talk. And you know how weird we get sometimes when we talk. I'll start telling dad jokes, you know, I mean, it'll just go downhill from there. I'll try and save us. Um, <laughs> Thank you, on Jason. The, <laughs> on the, the holds priority, non-priority non holds, is there a way to toggle those after the fact? Or do you have to like delete the hold and put on a new non-priority hold? Ooh, that is a really good question. Let's find out. Sarah, Andrew, Kelly, have any of you tried that? I'm sure Andrew's going to share his screen and show us his little testing, testing. Well, let's see. We need to sign in. Let's find a book. I really need to not do that. Oh, that was pretty quick. Search for a book is not usually the best, fastest search. Um, and if I click a hold. I say that's non-priority. I don't believe there is a way to toggle that off after. Because yeah, we show up here and it's saved there and it's just not editable. Um, what about from the patron record? It's a, well, it's a long shot, but. Yeah, let's double check. Uh, all right. All right, bye. Yeah. I mean, that's, and actually it doesn't even show me here that it's not a priority. Oh, wow. So that sounds like a no. And that also sounds like I'm gonna go file a bug right now. <laughs> <laughs> to say that we should be able to do that. And what's y'all's opinion? Should it show on the um, patron holds tab if it's a non-priority hold? If you think so, raise your hand. <laughs> I think trying more to find information the... everywhere is better. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was trying to find the raise hand thing, but I definitely agree it should be on the patron account. Perfect. Okay. I, I agree too. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I see we have a question from Wally. Is there any option to include the checkout to the holding patron when we confirm and print the hold? No. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> Unfortunately, there's not. Um, there's no way to go ahead and check out. Yeah, I know. There's no way to check it out when you go ahead and confirm that hold. You would just need to go ahead and have that patron up or click on the patron and check it out to them at that point. So it is a couple extra clicks to do that. Okay. I was gonna ask about the hold cancel reason. Is that dropdown only appear in the material record where the hold is the whole, on that hold tab? Or can you do it on the patron's mm -hmm. account? Because I haven't seen it on the patron's account. I just saw it on the material record. Um, you, you can also do it from the patron account here. I've actually okay. got that page up. Um, so in the patron account, it, it looks a little different, but it gives you this little thing down here. So if I say I want to cancel my hold here and give it that reason, then that's applied that reason uh, to that cancel hold. Okay, yeah, I missed that. So related to the hold cancellation notices, if you choose no reason given in that drop down, and you have the notice set up, are they going to get a notice that says no reason given? I believe not, but let me double check that. My the explicit wording was send a notice if a reason was selected. Okay. And the no reason given is not a value in the authorized value. Like that's just default that says no reason at this moment. You have to build your own reasons. And is it correct that they're still working on making it so you can make reasons? like pick whether they can be sent or not, whether it sends a notice or not. Oh, like to create a reason and say, for this reason specifically, don't send a notice? Right. I think I saw a bug for that. I hadn't seen a bug for that, but that would be totally mm -hmm. doable just with template toolkit in the notice itself. OK. Basically, we'd say, like, if the reason is x, make the notice completely empty and then it doesn't generate and it doesn't send. But if there's a bug in process to do that more officially, more officially is always good. Okay, yeah, I found the one I was looking at here. Man chat. I can talk to Lucas and, and get some template toolkit and we'll just throw it in the Q&A blog posts. If anybody wants to grab that, that would be easy enough. Oh, definitely a lot of conversation on that one, Jason. Oh, it says doesn't apply anymore. I've touched this bug before. It's always strange when I find a bug and realize I'm already CC'd on it. Huh. So that leads me to think that you just cancel the holds and have that no reason selected and it's not gonna send those notices automatically, but only for that one, any of the other ones that you choose, it would still send that notice unless we use the template toolkit. Correct, that, that's my understanding as well. Yeah, okay. Excellent. Um, here's a question then about these um, cancellation notices. Um, are they digestible or are they separate notices for each cancellation? They're currently separate notices for each cancellation. Okay. I, as far as I know, nobody's working on making those digestible. And it like makes sense. It, it, it kind of a parallel to the hold available email, which is always hold specific. Yeah, it, it would be nice for patrons if those could be digestible yeah. because if a courier delivers a box full of things and there's 30 things for a borrower in there, they're gonna get 30. We, well, we have this experience all the time where they get 30 emails or 30 text messages all like in a two minute yeah. time span, which is uh, never makes them happy. Sure, I, and I can see how for that sort of a bunch of things land at the same time. It'd be nice to do that daily or hourly as one big digest.
Come on, we're on a roll there. Ask more questions. Don't be shy. You're among friends. No. I'm, I'm trying to set up my system to show you a problem and, and, a, and a solution. So, okay, no worries. It's taking me a minute to get the, to get there. Well, I'm going to put Sarah on the spot. Sarah, what is the most interesting thing that you've seen about Koha in the time that you've been here with Bywater? What's that one feature that you're just like, oh, this is so amazing. Every ILS should have it. That is be Kelly. Every ILS should have Kelly. <laughs> In kind of, yeah. <laughs> It's hard to say for lots of reasons um, because there's so much, but also not having seen this side of it um, previously. But I think in general, just how customizable things are to work with libraries of different types and sizes, um, just whether it's a program or an individual library or a system with eight branches and just that there are ways to make um, to make it work for whatever the situation is. Excellent. Um, we have a question from Gita. Once a hold arrives at the library, the patron cannot cancel it, correct? Just making sure that has not changed. And Gita, that is correct right now. Once that item hits that hold shelf um, as a waiting status, it cannot be canceled by the patron. However, um, there is a partner that is sponsoring a development to go ahead and change that to let patrons um, cancel a, a waiting hold. Um, so it'll be coming soon, but we will make sure that everyone is fully aware of that when that is released. So, all right, George, what do you got for us? Um, Lizette pointed this out to me, so I'm going to show you, uh, if it's okay, I'm going to share my screen. Absolutely. Um, so you see Koha there? Yes. All right, good. I'm That's sharing the correct there. screen. That's always a plus. Um, Lizette pointed this out to me, um, is that when you go to place a hold um, and you're in a multi-branch system, uh, this is one of the Harry Potters. And so there's lots of different copies of lots of different places. And this is our test server, so it's a little bit slow. Um, up here, we've got the drop down for pickup at uh, Neckles. And all of these um, individual items now show allowed pickup locations. And so if you click on a specific individual item, when you click on that, it's going to change the, it's not going to use this pickup location, it's going to use the pickup location for that individual item, um, which is a problem for us because it just creates more work and people aren't going to realize that that's happening. Um, so I, um, well, after Lizette pointed out to me, I dug into our test system and wrote the um, jQuery that I just put into the, uh, the chat box there. So if anybody else is about to embark on this upgrade that's in a multi-branch system, this should, um, what it should do is make it so that when you um, load this page, it's going to set all the drop downs to the library that you're logged in at, um, which is going to save a huge number of headaches for me. It's all um, about you, it, George, isn't it? What? It's all about you, George, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. I got a lot to do. And, and, Fixing a newly created bug is, uh, mm -hmm. if I can do it before it's a problem, that's going to save me a lot of trouble later, so. I vaguely remember a bug about that. I'm trying to find it right now. Yeah, Lizette said she filed a bug. Okay. And she said she had asked somebody, um, she was trying to figure out the, how to how to do that herself, and, and I um, sent her an email, and because they're already using 
2105 in production. Yeah. So they needed something quick and, and I was yeah. able to figure it out on our test system. So we won't go into this with the problem, Excellent. which is one of the advantages of not being an early adopter. So. And I presume it's okay to share that um, with everybody through our posts. Absolutely, and I um, haven't had the chance to load it onto the the jQuery library yet, but I but I will. Perfect. Thank you, George. Did he say the bug or that was that? No, I'll one? find it. I know I okay. I know I'm, a I'm copied on it. Yeah, off the top of my head, I don't remember where it is, and I'm not logged into Bugzilla now. I, I'm in the middle of having lunch too, so. <laughs> No worries, no worries. Don't worry. Enjoy your lunch. Yeah, and I'm failing at searching Bookzilla, so I'll find that one and we'll go ahead and link it. So, um, and Andrew did post the jQuery library, which again, Koha is yours. Um, so as long as you have admin privileges, you can go ahead and add jQuery to OPAC user JS and um, internet user JS. And the jQuery library has a lot of great resources that have, you know, codes that's been shared from all over the place. Um, so that's always a fun place to explore and just kind of see what's available, what's out there. Um, you know, some of them are very simple, changing surname to last name. Some of them are very, very involved. Um, but just like your reports library, it's a simple copy and paste um, and put that in there. So, fun stuff. Say, unlike the reports library, things you pull out of the jQuery library are like designed to really fundamentally change how things behave in your Koha. So feel free as ever to open up a ticket and say, I found this in the library. Is it a good idea? And we'd be happy to weigh in. I don't think there's anything there that's going to just flat out break your Koha, but I don't know, Koha changes. And that's why we love our demo site, because you can always go there and plop it on there and see what happens. Another question related. Um, so this allowed pickup location column is new. Is, what's the actual in, intent for that column? Like, why was it added? Um, because given your circ rules, each individual item could have a completely different list of available pickup locations. Um, depending on what you've got set for reserves control, whether or not you're using the, the um, transport cost matrix or the library transfer limits, where your hold pickup location match values are set. There are a bunch of ways you could configure your, your system so that that column is really extraneous, but there are also a bunch of ways where like every single copy of that Harry Potter book on George's system could have a different list of libraries it could potentially go to. So if you're looking at that column and it seems extraneous, I'm very happy for you because you've made your circles easier than other folks. Yeah, it's just confusing, I guess, because it, it says a lot of pickup locations, but then it only has one. Like, it seems like it's isolating to one location per hole. That is not the intent. I would like to say that if that whatever it's listing for each of those items, like that's really what your rules say are the valid pickup locations, but I'm prepared to believe that it's figuring, it's calculating something incorrectly. Okay. I would be happy to look at a ticket on it. That's okay. I, I, I just wondered. <laughs> I would be happy to make somebody else look at a ticket on that because I don't <laughs> understand. It. One thing I've noticed, Jason, is that the, um, uh, this is the first place in Koha that I've seen this um, jQuery select to instead of just a list of an HTML list of drop down selections, they're using jQuery to gather the list of, uh, of options in the drop down. And on my test server, it takes a, a couple of extra seconds to load those drop downs. I'm imagining that they'll load faster on our production system, um, but I have no way of knowing yet. Yeah, I had that issue come up last week at WebDev. Lucas helped me with it, where um, there's like a REST API sysadmin, and it, it caps out at a number. So like when you click on the, the pickup location, it was only 
picking the first 20 libraries and I had to up that to like 100 so that all my libraries would show up in that in those kind of drop downs. But it wasn't that. happening on your system, George, because I checked here. Uh, no, it's not happening on our test server because we had uh, something else that we needed to expand that REST API thing for. Yeah, that's something the the developers in the Koha community as a whole are getting used to, as they as they're moving more toward using API calls instead of SQL calls to grab lists of stuff. In your larger systems, where those lists tend to be more than twenty items long, that adds a little like a uh, coding complication that I don't know that anyone had thought about. Twenty libraries. That's that's a crazy number of libraries. When will that happen? Uh, often. Who else has a question? All right, Kelly, what do you think is the coolest thing in this release? That is a great question, Donna. And I am all for hold reminder notifications because I am guilty of getting that email that my book is there and I completely forget and I don't get reminded again. My library is not a Koha library, just so everyone knows. Um, and I thoroughly get upset having to go back to the bottom of my list of a hold. <laughs> so hold reminder notifications are fantastic. And I, a shout out to Hotchkiss School if they're here because they did sponsor that one. So yeah, that is my absolute favorite. Well, it's a close tie between that and the auto renew digest. Um, but I do love the, um, the, the hold reminder notice. We've had so many patron partners ask for it. I think it's a great idea. So I'm looking forward to seeing libraries use it. And I, my library is a Koha library. So I will be very curious if they are going to start using it or not. So. Andrew, like what about you? Uh, I'm hoping my library starts sending hold reminder notices so I can stop getting charged 50 cents every time I don't pick up a hold. It's the only thing I owe my library money for at this point. <laughs> but you know, it's not cheap. Uh, my favorite thing, I, I don't know if this is my favorite. This is a thing I used for the first time yesterday in the reports module, the new insert runtime parameter button. Yes. yes. I'm particularly bad at remembering if my runtime parameter for branches wants to say branch or branches. And so I get it wrong and then I get a really annoying error when I try to save it and I've gotten it wrong. So now I can just click the button and Koha will remember for me if I want to say branch or branches. So let me share my screen real quick. So for if those of you have not seen it yet, um, and I am notoriously bad at reports, so this is a huge help for me too. Um, so when you are in um, any sort of a report, you can see here the insert runtime parameter. So if I wanted to, I don't know, I'm going to break this one, um, add something to the where statement, and I can say um, the library. So I can go ahead and use those branches, and it will go ahead and insert that for you. So you've got those options. Um, so really kind of cool. It, it saves definitely a couple of steps. I've been using it quite a lot. Um, actually, in 2005, when I have to do reports, I'll come in here and grab the parameter and then go back. It just makes it a little bit easier. Um, but you can do patron categories. You can do a text field, which I haven't worked with. Andrew. What is, what yeah, that was my question. Yeah. What does text field mean? It's probably just a plain text, just a, an empty box. So just type whatever you want. Like if you are searching for a note that contains certain text, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there yep. we go. And so that yeah, it just give you a, a box. Interesting. Yeah. You I've say, um, authorized value. Does it then give you the list of authorized values to pick from? <gasps> oh, neat. I was going to say, I always forget library, how libraries can fit configured, but this helps with authorized value and item types. I'm always forgetting. Oh, somebody's mind is blown. Rebecca's mind is blown. It's, mind nice. is blown. it's taking awesome. something that was really very much like hidden on that tips page in the 
in the wiki and making it like obvious. Just I just really found myself looking for another report that used the same parameter I wanted to then know how to structure it. So this is going to streamline my report writing skills. Yeah. That is a that's a that's one that I'm very fond of as a as an SQL struggler. Uh, well, they're also they're color coded now. I don't believe they were color coded previously either. No, they I don't think they were. Like that aqua color. Yeah. SQL struggler. I'm going to join that group, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> now you're too good to join that group, Kelly. <laughs> what else? Any other questions? Or y'all want to talk about any of your favorites or have questions about any of the enhancements? I have a favorite. <laughs> Sorry, I keep jumping in. I see people on camera I should stop. But uh, since we're on the, the, the topic of SQL, um, they also added a list parameter. This uh oh, i forgot that guy right. so and that's not in the list there so that's probably a bug like needs to add it to the list of list lists yeah but it'll let you put in lists of barcodes as your parameter instead of just one at a time all right I'm, i'll go away again no you're good you're good that's that is one that i was real excited about too again we've had and i think actually um nick did it because he was tired of me asking all the time um and it was like i need to do this and he's like let me just write that so you can get it done <laughs> so that was awesome um i see laura and amanda both had um on camera y'all have questions please okay, i'll be brave here we go <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, and bear with me, I'm still pretty new, but my question is about the auto renewal digests. So we currently have auto renewals turned on, but we don't have the auto renewal notices because there was no digest option. So after the upgrade and we decide to turn on the auto renewal digest, so right now they're auto renewed and the renewal notice goes out. When we turn on the auto renewal digest, Will the regular renewal and the auto renewal notice go out? Yes, unless you flip the switch to say, don't send the regular renewal notice. Okay. Um, that's a system preference, I believe, called renewal send notice. Oh, hey, and I wrote that down with a question mark next to it. I was on the right track. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sure. And George, I'm looking for that to do the demo. Um, Lauren, did you have a question? All right, Kelly, you look like you might have had a question. I was confused with what Jason was talking about with the list. Is that what you had to use a report pl plus plugin black back in the day? Okay. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. There's some basic SQL I put in there to play with it. And then thank you the very much. There. Thank, thank you, you thank you. Thank you. Well, it's gonna be so much faster than me actually trying to find the bug. <laughs> and it was in my section, so I really should be better at it than I am. Um, so in our reports module, I'm gonna do a new report. We're inserting JSON SQL. And so what you're gonna do is use the enter barcode list, pipe list. And then when you run that report, you'll be asked to enter that list of barcodes in this particular case. So if you have them in a text file, for instance, if you've done an item search and pulled all of the barcodes for that, you can go ahead and just copy those barcodes and plop those right in there. And it will make all of those changes or do whatever you want to do at once. So it can be, pulling information out, it can be, um, you know, getting things ready to go over to batch item or whatever the case may be. Um, but you can go ahead and enter those lists in there. So really exciting to see that one. All right. Who else? I've mentioned before I'm a fan of the uh, <clears throat> of the uh, enhancement that Neckles paid for to 
make stronger passwords for um, different borrower categories or different password settings for different borrower categories. So, yeah, that would, I, I imagine a lot of public libraries will be really excited about that one to suddenly be able to let your patrons have their very simple pin that like is the last four of their phone number that, but then make your, say your system administrator maybe have a longer, more powerful password. Yes, uh, after the upgrade, our staff, it's gonna be like 12 characters and strong passwords, so. But borrowers can still have the last four digits of their phone number, their birthday or whatever, so. But no more staff with 2468 as their password. I think it's good. I don't know about this that many characters, but you know, because I would forget. But I like the idea of making passwords um, updated, like every three months, four months, change your password. It's time to change your password on your work anniversary or something, so people aren't. That'll be the that'll be the next thing I'm thinking about funding yeah. is. Uh, is passwords that expire, um, mm -hmm. password expiration, and then no, you can't use the same password that you've already used in the past X number of days. That's good too. That is all set through your patron categories. So administration, patron categories, you're gonna go ahead and choose that patron category. So I'm gonna choose our library staff one. And then as you come down into all of these options, we have the minimum password length. So we could set that at four. Um, this is our test site, so we don't wanna make it too bad because then none of us can log in. <laughs> um, and then require strong password. Um, does it follow the system preference, which is set to no, or do we require a strong password for this patron category? So we go, can go ahead and set that to yes. Um, so that's added in there. And just a couple of other things that I think um, have been added into the patron categories that folks may not be aware of. Um, Y'all know that you can do the library limitations. So if this patron category is only ever at Sparkly Unicorn Land, you can go ahead and limit it so that you only see that when you're logged in as that branch. Um, your options for password reset and password change are in here also. So you can go ahead and change those on a per patron category. Um, block expired patrons. Um, so again, this is going to follow or deviate from your system preferences that are in there. Of course, your privacy is in there. Um, exclude from local holds priority. So will they be given priority with that local holds priority system preference? Will they be able to do that or not? Um, and then check for previous checkouts. This is one that I hadn't really been aware of. Um, I love the previous checkouts functionality, but it can be really frustrating when you turn it on for everybody. Um, especially if any of those patrons that can go ahead and, um, you know, check out the same things over and over again. So now you could leave check for previous checkouts turned off, but for a specific patron category, say yes, um, you know, do want you to check for um, preferences and then you can put the date in there too as a system preference as far as how many days back you look for those previous checkouts. Um, so one of the libraries that was really excited about this has a very active homebound program. So what they've done is they've turned it on for their homebound patrons and they've put a limit of 180 in there. So it will tell them if they're trying to check out something to a patron who ha has had that in the last six months. So some really nice ways to be able to use that. Um, if you have kids that check out the same book over and over again, you probably don't want to turn this on, um, but you do have that ability to go ahead and set that in there. So really nice option um, within your patron categories to take a look at those sorts of things. So, And, and then you roll the... Sorry, Donna, go ahead. I was going to say, and then you'll notice the enhanced messaging preferences down here too, um, with the auto renewal in particular. Now remember, anything on this page that you change, because you might get really excited, you just saw something that you're like, I want to change this for my youth patron or my ILL. That is only going to change and affect new patrons you create. It will not affect previous patrons that are already exist in this patron category. So if you do find something that you want to change, and you want it to be retroactive to all your patrons in that category, send us a ticket and data will go ahead and batch change those for you. So super exciting to, to know that those exist on that page, but just remember you need to take just two steps, make the change and then let us know so we can change those to the, the past ones. And this is especially for what Donna just talked about, 
and the auto renewal digests. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Other questions, concerns, thoughts? No. I threw a bug into the chat to add that list option to that list of uh, parameters, of insertable parameters. Perfect. Awesome. Um, and you're right, Wally. We we will be reminding folks of, hey, make sure this you know that this is only applying to new patrons, not existing ones. Um, and again, you know, just anytime you have a question or a thought or, hey, I've changed something, is that okay? Not, is that okay? But I've changed something, do I need to do anything else? Um, you can always ask too, because we're always happy to answer those questions either through chat, email, give us a call, whatever the case may be, um, and just say, hey, I made this change. Is there anything I need to be aware of? So. Hey. What, did we have a puppy view, Kelly? You're muted. <laughs> I'm trying, but there's this pole. <laughs> well, just go pick him up. He's not that big. Oh my God, he's huge. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't see him. Yeah, all we see is a fluff. <laughs> awesome. All right, think about other questions or concerns. And, if, you know, while this is focused on, you know, the 2105 upgrades and things like that, you know, if you've had a burning question about something, go ahead and ask that too. Because there's been so many um, enhancements in 2011 and 2105, it may have been something that you've long yearned for and has been added. And we had, oh, I shouldn't say this, did our question and answers go up on a, a blog post? Yeah, so we can share that for the, past questions that we had during the webinars? Yep, it's um, it's an update to the post where the registration oh. was, but I'll put it in the chat. I got Perfect. it, sir. Oh, thank you, okay. Sure. Because there were some good questions, um, like about the devs, if somebody was interested in you know, looking to see I have extra money and I wanna throw some money at a dev, we talked, that was a question that was asked during our one of our webinars. Um, and there were a lot of specific ones about importing profiles. Yes. I remember that one. Yeah, so as we do get those, when we do get those questions, we do go ahead and transcribe them and get them listed so everyone can see those. And again, they stay up forever. Um, so you can always find those as you go. Um, and again, I hate to admit it, but as a librarian, but sometimes the best way is to go to Google and search by water and whatever the topic is or Koha and whatever the topic is, um, because that's going to bring up not only our resources, but also resources from other companies around the world that are doing things um, that can be really helpful too. So um, it's okay. We're not going to be upset if, if you go use somebody else's resources, um, but you know, there's a lot out there and we're all working together. Um, Rebecca has a great question. For the new ACK log tracking, how long is the data retained? 180 days. Unless you have told us differently. Mm -hmm. It's the same as all of your other logs, um, which by default we set it at 180 days. Um, if you've asked us to curtail that, we will. Um, if you've asked us to keep, keep it longer, we'll do that also. Um, Rebecca, yours is 180 days. Like yours personally. <laughs> <laughs> Only Rebecca's. Nobody else at that library, yeah. just Rebecca. Just Rebecca's. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to start doing dad jokes then since we don't have any more questions. What's a skeleton's favorite road? No, 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 no. Hey, before we, before we uh, resort to that. Yeah, please. Rebecca, I also know there is a bug out there to make us able to keep the logs for different amounts based on which module they're in. Let me find that. Actually, as I say this aloud, I'm fairly certain that I filed it based on a conversation with you. So you probably have seen it already. Yeah, that sounds familiar. 
I would love to see just someplace in Koha that says, here are all your logs, here are how long the data is retained. Because I know everyone has a different setting for every system. Um, yeah. I feel like somebody might have done something. I know, Andrew, you wrote, you wrote something for us about that, but. I wrote a report for that that I talked about at the Koha US conference. Um, let me see if I can dig it up. That would be awesome, George. And I know we have like big abstract development roadmap ideas of finding all that stuff that is like in a config file on your server somewhere and finding a way to make that visible and accessible in Koha proper. Because yeah, there are a whole bunch of things that are different like cron job settings that right now there's no good way for, for that to be seen in Koha proper. And it, it makes things harder than they need to be. Well, and like, I could just add it to the about tab, you know, yes. it has yeah. curl and all of that, just cron jobs or blog time or something like that. Or cron reports, yeah. you know, because the, the, all that information would be really nice if libraries could see it on their own without having to ask the question. This is kind of exhausting. I'm going through all the slides I did at the conference to try and find the one that has that report on it. Thank you, George. I appreciate it. Andrew, I'm looking. I did a bug search for log reported by Andrew, and I'm not finding it. What other words would you, you have used? One does wonder. Let me see if I can find it in my email. That's usually actually okay. a, better, a better search than Bugzilla. Did you know, Donna, you could see all the bugs you've created from your Bugzilla account? So you could say, I know I created it and I can click and see all the bugs that you, yeah. I did actually. I think that would be a lot for Andrew to look through though. Yeah, because he's a really involved bug person, whereas I only do a few. Um, but you can say, again, when you're into Bugzilla, um, once you've logged in, and if you haven't, if you don't have an account, I would encourage you to get an account. It's just an email sign up. Um, and that way you can go ahead and comment on things and stuff like that, file bugs as you want to, all of that sort of stuff. Um, but you can go ahead and search or file the bugs. You can see open bugs reported by me. So I have reported, I have, yeah, I have reported 45 bugs and that will go ahead and show me the list of them, the number, what it is, who's working on it and whether it's whatever the status is um, and whether or not it's been resolved. So, um, Great way to go ahead and kind of see what's going on with all of those. Now, Andrew posted 18631. And that one is, should take an option for modules and action logs. And this is pushed to 2111. So it's not in the version you all are about to get updated to, but it's in the next version after that. And I suppose theoretically might end up getting backported. Um, but yeah, that'll be nice. That would let us say, keep the patrons module log for a long time, but delete the circ logs after just 180 days. Excellent, that is very exciting. Oh yeah, look, Rebecca signed off on it. <laughs> I do feel like Rebecca's attached to your son. <laughs> Excellent. If it's about logs, I'm sure my name is on it somewhere. Um, a question about Bugzilla. Is there a way to see all of your followed tickets? Not necessarily ones that you create, but ones that you're CC'd on. Ooh. I believe so, yes. So that link I put in the chat box goes to the GitHub site where that report is. <clears throat> um, it's like 2,300 lines long. So it's an exhaustive report. And all it does is it looks at the different tables that have a timestamp in them and assesses what is the oldest timestamp in those tables so that you know what the oldest data is in each of those tables, which will give you a good idea of what's being purged and when, so. No, I'm doing a webinar. This will be recorded. On that search screen. You can go ahead and um, search by people and add your as a CC list member and go ahead and put your 
however you're registered in there for that. Um, and it will go ahead and do your search based on that and show you all of the bugs that you are CC'd on. Wait, Donna, where do I go? Sorry, I missed it. Search, an advanced oh. search. Oh, I see, I see, I see. I see. And then uh, CC list member. Thank you, that's been bothering me for months. <laughs> I've never thought to look like that. And I like that way to look. Oh, see, see, I'm so bad at searching Bugzilla. I found all the ways to search that might help. <laughs> um, and you know, you can save a search. I did see that in my preferences. Remember that search. Mm -hmm. So I, what do I, how do I say, see all the searches? Hi, search. Well, I'm gonna stop sharing. Kelly or Andrew, one of you two can share and show that process. Oh, sure. Do, 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 do. Show me, Andrew, show me. This is giving me flashbacks to um, playing World of Warcraft where you could always ask the computer to tell you how many hours you've played of this life-sucking video game. I've CC'd 168 bugs. That's more than Donna's CC'd. I've wasted more time in Bugzilla than Donna has. Um, it's not a waste. <laughs> down here at the bottom, having done a search, I get this little thing that says, remember search as my CC. I was getting excited because I had more than that, Andrew, but I realized I actually didn't add my CC email. So I just got everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was like, How now that I've made that search, it actually is right down here in that, that link at the bottom, my CCs. What's this other one? I don't know. I saved some other search a long time ago of things that I need to sign off on. Ooh. Ooh, that's got work, got work to do. <laughs> Thank you. That was very helpful. You're welcome. And always ask. And that's what I tell everyone when we're working on trainings or things like that. If there is something that annoys you or is bugging you, please ask. Um, because odds are we either know an answer or we will put our brains to work trying to find an answer because we love doing that. Um, so definitely let us know. We don't want we don't want those frustrations. You have enough other things to get frustrated about. <laughs> All right, anything else? We are at 10 of, but I don't wanna keep you all hanging around unless you need, unless you really want to. Again, we will go ahead and post this recording um, online. Um, so you'll be able to review that and all of the questions. Okay, so now it's time for my joke. What's a skeleton's favorite road? Own road? A dead end. Hmm. I was going to say the road of bones, but that's kind of. Um, you're pushing it there. That's, that's Dark. weak, Donna. Weak. We've got, we've got 10 minutes and 22 smart people. I think we can punch that joke up. <laughs> there you go. Let's rewrite the joke. <laughs> It's, I mean, it's not even skeleton specific. Yeah, it's just dead. It's dead. <laughs> Anyways. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for joining us. We are doing another one of these. I don't even remember. Thursday, y'all, I think. Sarah, is that right? Yeah, Thursday. I believe it's 11 Eastern, but let me double check that. And yes, we may, 11 Eastern. we may have different questions. So if you want to join us again, feel free because it could be a whole nother show. Or if not, again, we will post any of the questions that we do get and the recording. So you can go ahead and watch that at any time that you want to. So, and, and we will go will ahead and post. Hmm? And Donna will learn a new joke by then. Yes, we promise. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we also will post the chat and all of those sorts of things. So all of that information is going to be saved as you go through it. Of course, it'll be funny, George. They're always funny. Uh, <laughs> no, not that one. <laughs> oh, because it had no guts. Oh, I love that one. Why was the jack-o'-lantern afraid to cross the road? Because it had no guts. Jack, I like that one, Rebecca. So ignore everybody else. Uh, <laughs> all right, y'all have a great day. Thank you so much for joining us. And we look forward to talking with y'all soon. Bye. Bye.